One of my favorite things to do is to try out new headphones. I'm sure I'm not alone in this. But with the hype behind planar magnetic drivers or premium headphone brands, it's a sad truth that cheaper headphones sometimes get kicked to the curb. Companies like Monoprice have a handful of affordable sub $100 headphones that perform quite well. An example is their HR5 series, both open and close back. And of course, we have some no-name Chinese brands that produce amazingly built headphones for around $50, such as the headphones I reviewed last year that took a lot of aesthetic cues from Grado. Now, Moondrop has joined the affordable headphone market. They recently introduced the Joker, which sells for $80. The folks at Shenzhen Audio sent the Joker to review. As you know, this retailer is among a few that specializes in chi-fi gear. If you're looking for new gear, check them out. Moondrop says that the Joker is a professional monitoring headphone. They claim that the drivers are tuned for fast response, accurate timbre, and high resolution. The marketing aims this headphone directly at recording studios, or at least applications where artists need to monitor their productions. Moondrop says that the 50mm drivers in this headphone are proprietary and developed in-house. The frequency response graph Moondrop provides indicates a bass roll-off and an emphasis around the 3kHz mark. They apparently wanted to tune their headphones to the head-related transfer function, which they believe would render more accuracy. As for build, well, this is an interesting mix of good and maybe so-so. The majority of this headphone is plastic. The headband construction is thin metal band. The ear cups have minimal horizontal and vertical swivel. Moondrop says that the outer ear cups are brass covered in black paint that will fade and reveal the brass as you use the headphone. Tapping on the ear cups does not give the impression that there's metal, but maybe the coat of paint is very good at masking the brass. The Joker comes with proprietary removable ear pads. These are a mixture of pleather and fabric. They are fairly tall, providing ample room for most ears, I think. The headband padding is surprisingly robust. It's a lot more than many expensive headphones provide. Odyssey and Hi-Fi Man could take a cue from this. Unfortunately, all the padding uses somewhat stiff foam. This is not memory foam, which really would have been a significant upgrade. The clamping force is, well, secure. It's not too tight, at least not for me. The headphone will sit firmly without producing so much pressure that it bothers me. I think the clamping force is about the same as on the HD6XX. Despite the use of stiff foam padding, the Joker is actually really easy to wear for long periods. I've had this headphone on for three hours without fatigue. It is light so that the top of my head never becomes uncomfortable and the generous ear pads keep my ears rather happy. The Joker comes with a braided cable. It transmits very little microphonics and feels much better than the cables that we have gotten with headphones that cost five to six times more. Moondrop did not include any spare ear pads, which I think is a real bummer. I've been advocating for companies to throw in one extra set and leave out the other nonsense, but I'm sure they just want more money from the ear pad accessories. Ultimately, the Joker is a decently made headphone. It is comfortable, it comes with the bare essential accessories, but they are acceptable. I listened to the Joker for several weeks. I had it plugged into my solid state amps and tube amps directly into my laptop sound card through the external units such as the MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus, Burson 3XR, RMB 80i2, Low 2 Paw S1, an Eco Zerta ITM03, and frankly a litany more. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD, streamed lossy and lossless music from various providers, and consumed videos from YouTube, Amazon, Netflix, and other places. I tried to get the full breadth of headphone experience from this device, from casual listening to concerted hours of detailed comparisons. My impression of the bass is that there is a perceptible sub-bass roll-off, surprise, surprise. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, I had to increase volume quite a bit before the headphones started to reproduce the sub-bass rumble that should be obvious from the beginning of this track. Transients is fairly quick, faster than on the neutral Allo S5X. 
I think it is comparable to the bass transients on some planar headphones, such as the Sundara. Separation between sub-bass and mid-bass is fairly good. There's no obvious muddiness here. For example, when the crescendo hit in Mountains, the Joker separated the organ from the bass element and other instruments. All the instruments were audible, and if I concentrated, I could almost pinpoint their positions. In comparison, the S5X has a bit more clarity and detail in this regard, but not so much placement ability. Drums sound impactful, but not sharp. There's a slightly muffled thudding sound for drum strikes, rather than sharp thwacking. This was a bit similar to what I heard on the S5X. On the other hand, the Joker's ear cups never rumbled or shook with the bass, even when I listened well beyond my personal comfort threshold. The mids are forward, at least compared to the mids. There is a significant emphasis of vocal sibilance, which is patently obvious with female vocalists, and is also present with some male vocalists. And when such detail is recorded into the track, it is going to be prominent in the playback. My go-to test to listen for this is Orla Gartland's Why Am I Like This, which retains the sibilance inside the recording, obviously. The Joker made any S sounds from Orla sound almost piercing, even at lower volumes. The S5X and HD6XX in comparison have a more neutral rendition and do not push this detail into the ears like the Joker. In fact, I would say that the Joker's rendition in this specific area is similar to that of the HD560S, which can be very fatiguing. Other than that, vocals always stand apart from every other element. They're not so much as close to the ears as they are further away from the ears, yet still separated from the other elements. They are, in other words, clear. Individual mid-centric instruments do not meld into a muddy mess. Guitars, drums, pianos, cellos, whatever is in the mix, the Joker let me hear their unique tonalities. Treble seems a bit reduced and elevated. Huh. Lower treble appears to have a reduction, but the mid or upper treble has an emphasis, probably maybe 3 to 4 decibels. Compared to the S5X or HD6XX, this was fairly obvious. The Joker never made any of the instruments sound piercing or harsh, but some treble elements were more pronounced. For example, brass and horns might jump out a little bit more on this headphone than on the HD6XX. Sometimes elevated treble gives the impression of greater clarity or detail. Some sounds might be more audible. Footsteps or soft breathing could be perceived as more detailed in those cases. When I listened to Superposition by Young the Giant, I expected to hear some of the nuanced details. For example, the second vocalist's voice layered beneath the primaries and the sharp intakes of breaths. I did almost hear the layered vocals. There was a characteristic echo, but the Joker never really parsed out the voices, unlike with the HD800S and the Focal Clear and also the Austrian audio headphones. The sharp intakes of breaths were audible, though, on the Joker. When I switched to Flight from the City by Johan Johansson, the Joker easily separated the cello and piano, their tonalities unmuffled or blended together. I heard the electric buzzing effects throughout the track along with the occasional creaking of the pianist's bench. This brings us to detail retrieval. If you have followed my content for a while, then you know I use a subjective test with Kazuki's track, New Light. There are soft footsteps on dry grass that start at 11 seconds, and I count them for the first minute of the song. So far, the king of detail in this test is the HD800S followed by the Focal Clear and not too far behind the various Austrian audio headphones. For the sake of comparison, here's the breakdown of the footstep test. The Sennheiser HD800S presents 22 footsteps, the Focal Clear, 18. The Austrian Audio High X65, 16 to 17 footsteps. The High X55 presents 16. The High X15 and X25BT present 13 to 14. The High Fam and Sundara, Aventone Planar, Sipka Phoenix, and Beta Dynamic DT1990 present 10 to 11 footsteps. The Arlo Audio S5X renders 10, and the S4X gives us 9. The Monolith M1070, M1570, Sipka Robin, and Ultrasonic Pro 1480i all provide 8 to 9. The Odyssey LCD2 Close and LCD2 Classic each provide 7 to 8. The older M1060C provides 7 footsteps. The Odyssey LCD1 and HD6XX present 6 to 7. And the Neumann NDH20 presents 5 to 6 footsteps. The Joker presented 11 clear, sharp, crisp footsteps. 
this keeps it in the running against some of the more hyped headphones in this regard. So I'd say that the Joker has above average detail retrieval, and as I already described, subtle details and separation are this headphone's strength, if nothing else. Now you can repeat this sort of testing by yourself at home. All you need is a copy of Kazuki's new light track, and then compare what you hear for the first minute to another headphone that you may have lying around. And this is something I encourage everybody to do. Because when you buy a new headphone based upon all the promises that you see in the marketing or the hype you hear about or read about online, sometimes when you actually get the headphone and put it on your head, the experience can be rather different. And if you find this test to be useful and you figure out that the new headphone is not really all that great compared to the older ones that you have, you might as well just return the thing and save your money. Now, soundstage. Let's talk about that with the Joker. Soundstage can be a tricky thing. Fit, ear pads, sufficient power to drivers, and of course the original recording are all playing competing roles in the impression of soundstage. I have a soundstage scale. I use the HD6XX and LCD1 as my average performers. Headphones that have more or less soundstage than these two are judged accordingly. The Odyssey Mobius and all Beats headphones have claustrophobic soundstage. The NDH20 and ATH M60X have below average soundstage. The HD6XX and LCD1 have average soundstage. The Sofka Phoenix, Emotiva GR1, and Ultrasonic Pro 1480i have average to maybe above average soundstage, depending on the particular recording. The Hi-Fi Matsundara, Avatar Planar, Austrian Audio Hi X55 and X65, and the LCD2 Classic have above average soundstage. The Hi-Fi Mandiva has wide soundstage, and the HD800S has super wide soundstage. In all the tests I perform, my opinion is that the Joker has slightly above average soundstage. It is wider than the HD6XX, but not as wide as the Sundara. When I reviewed Moondrop's last headphone, the Void, I was a bit confused. Let's just say it had a lot of work that needed to be done, or redone. With the Void, Moondrop again used the HRTF as their guidepost. The sub-bass was rolled off, the mids were forward and sibilant, and there was an upper treble emphasis. It had average detail and slightly above average soundstage. Well, it's almost like Moondrop took the void and closed off the ear cups with the Joker. Now that may sound a little harsh, but that seems to be the impression I get. The Joker has a bass roll off similar to the void. It has emphasized mids, especially for vocals. The only differentiation between the Void and the Joker in this regard is that the Joker has a sharper, more pronounced emphasis of sibilance. The treble is very similar between the headphones, and the Joker seems to have just a tiny bit more upper treble push. So, I don't know what to tell you other than this is not a bassy closed back headphone. If you hate sibilance, the Joker is likely going to make you rather unhappy. If you like bass to at least have some interaction in your music, eh, the Joker is not it. But if you like detail and do not mind sibilance, then the Joker's tuning might be to your liking, especially if you're more vocal focused. While I really was not happy with the Void's fit, the Joker is a substantial improvement. And let's not forget that the Joker is an $80 headphone, so some of its physical limitations should be taken into that context. I had a hard time recommending the Void, but the Joker, I think, is a little different. I cannot say with a straight face that this headphone is for everyone, or even the majority. But if after all your research you think that the Joker might fit into your collection, then I think the price is fair, and the build decent, the comfort quite good, and the sound signature focused on vocals and detail retrieval, if that's your thing. In a way, I think the Joker is what the Void should have been. Though whether that's for better or worse is up for debate.